Hi everyone, welcome. Today is all about phase diagrams. Uh, we've covered so far solutions, basics of alloys, and uh, how to read phase diagrams about complete solubility and partial solubility. Today we want to uh, measure and calculate uh, phase fractions uh, based on a phase diagram and also quantify phase composition at a given temperature. If you wanna follow those courses and you haven't, I recommend you to uh, first watch those videos, understand the basics behind phase diagrams and then come to this video. The link is in the description. So we begin with a phase diagram of complete solubility. As you can see, is a phase diagram of a copper nickel alloy with nickel here at 100% and also nickel here at 0%. We have a, a liquid region on up top and we have solid region down here and we have a region of two phase, which is this airfoil shaped region in the, in, in the middle. And that's the region that we have solid and liquid at the same time. So this is a basic phase diagram that we have for um, complete solubility and we want to uh, measure phase diagram and we want to measure uh, phase fractions when we talk about phase fractions first we need to know how many phases do we have in here well according to this phase diagram we have one liquid phase here we have one solid phase here and we have a region which has solid and liquid. So in general, we have two phases, solid and liquid. It could be either 100% liquid at some places and temperatures and could be a mixture of them. But the amount of phases, and I show with P phases, the amount of phases that we have is one, we have liquid, and the other phase that we have is solid. So we have two phases. When we talk about phase fraction, what do we mean by phase fraction? We, we mean the total amount of, for example, a phase fraction of liquid. We mean the amount of liquid that you have over the total amount of phases that you have available at that temperature. That's phase fraction, amount of liquid to the total amount. Also for solid, it's the same thing. So for solid, also it's amount of solid to your total amount that you have. It's the same thing. So um, we want to bring that into phase diagram, phase fractions. So what it means is that you have a total of something. You have a pot and that is that has solid and liquid in it, just like an icy water that you have ice cubes in, in water. It's the same thing. You have solid and liquid at the same time. Phase fraction tells you how much of the whole pot is made of ice and how much of the whole pot is made of cold water. That's your mix. Here is the same. If you have solid and liquid present, it, if, um, from a phase diagram, you can actually calculate how much of it is in solid form and how much of it in your pot is in liquid form. So to be able to do that, um, what I do here, we need, to, we need to have two kinds of information to be able to calculate phase fractions. First of all, we need to what we need to know what kind of alloy we have, right? So it, uh, that uh, that makes a difference. What kind of alloy we have? So we need to pick, or we need to be given that kind of an information of what kind of alloy do we have? So for the purpose of this example, we pick three alloys. Imagine that we are receiving three alloys and we want to work with them. First alloy, we're gonna go for let's say 10% of nickel in copper. The second alloy, we go for 40%. And the third alloy, we go for 90%. So the third alloy has 90% of nickel in it, as you can see. Okay, that's the first kind of information that we need to know. So we have now three alloys. We've picked three alloys. The second kind of information that we need to be able to calculate phase fraction is obviously temperature. At which temperature are we talking about that we need those phase fractions? Because obviously phases change when you change the uh, temperature, right? A quick example is water vapor is a phase. And when you cool the temperature down, it turns into liquid another phase. So Obviously, phases change. Uh, so we want to now pick a temperature. So what we can do is 
we can now have an arbitrary uh, temperature. So uh, for the for example, we pick um, 1350 at, and as one temperature, and then we also pick uh, 1250 as another temperature. And I think that should be enough for the example of today. So um, we call our alloy that has 10% nickel alloy number one, the one that has 40% nickel alloy number two, and number two, and the one that has 90% nickel, we call it alloy number three. Uh, our temperature of interest for the first step is here, is at 1350. So the cross section of your alloy and the temperature is here for alloy number one, it's here for alloy number two, and it's here for alloy number three. So, um, I'll get, I'll get rid of these parts just to have more space. So now we start at 1350 Celsius. All right. At 1350 for alloy number one, what do we have? We are in liquid phase and there's no uh, other phase available or present. So we are at, we have liquid, and it's 100%. For alloy number two, we are here. We are still in the liquid region and there's no other phase available. So for also alloy number two, we are in liquid. We have 100% of liquid phase. And for alloy number three, we are here at 1350 that has 90% nickel in. And here we are in the solid region. We are below the solidus line. So we are in solid region. Therefore, for alloy number three, we have 100% of solid. This is at 1350. Now let's cool down. Let's bring down the temperature. So we go down from uh, three, uh, 1350 to 1250. At 1250 for alloy number one, it crosses the composition line at this point for alloy number two at this point and for alloy number three at this point. So at 1250 Celsius for alloy number one, we are still in the liquid region. So we have again liquid by 100%. For alloy number two, we are now in the uh, airfall at uh, a two phase region that we have solid and liquid as also indicated in here. But as a general rule, when you want to identify the phases within a two phase region, you go horizontally to see what kind of phases are available at the borders and those are making your phases. For example, here, if you go horizontally, you hit solidus line and liquidus line, therefore you have two phases available a solid and liquid. So here for alloy number two at 1250, we have liquid, also we have solid. For alloy number three, we are here at 1250 and we have solid again by 100%. So, so far as you can see out of six, five have five and uh, have hundred percent. They are in a fully either liquid or solid region. Therefore, it's easy to calculate its phase fraction is just 100%. But for this point that we are now in two phase region, when you want to calculate phase fraction, you always start with this, no matter what. You always start with a horizontal line. So at this temperature and this composition, 40% nickel, that we are in this two, uh, two phase region, you make a horizontal line so that it crosses the two phase region, so that it crosses solidus and liquidus line, just like that. Where it hits the solidus line, you make a point, and where it hits the liquidus line, you also make a point. Okay. Now you drop it down. From these points, you drop it down. one that goes here and the other one that goes roughly here. Okay, so let's say, for example, this is 30% nickel where it hits the, the horizontal axis 
where it hits the composition line. And this is, let's say it's 44% nickel, okay? That is the total amount of phases that we have. So the total that we have, that's your total, is 44 minus 30, which is 14. That's your total, okay? Now we want to calculate phase fraction of liquid and phase fraction of solid because in that melting pot, now we have two phases available, solid and liquid. So we want to uh, calculate the phase fraction. Now for phase fraction of liquid, as we said, for phase fraction of liquid, you need to have the amount of liquid over the total amount, right? Over the total. Now we just measure the total. Your total is 14. The total, um, the, the total length of this line that crosses the two, the two boundaries. And for now, liquid uh, amount of liquid, you measure this line where it hits the solidus line. So to be able to calculate liquid phase fraction, you make the horizontal line that crosses the solidus line. And that would be this. So this is 44. The length of this line that crosses the solidus line is 44, obviously, minus 40. So your answer would be 4 to 14, right? This is the phase fraction of your liquid. So the amount of liquid to the total amount. What is the total amount? The total of the total length of this horizontal line that crosses the boundaries. That's your total length. What is now the amount of liquid, the relative amount of liquid, when you make that horizontal line, when it crosses the solidus line, that length is the uh, relative amount of liquid that you put in in this formula to get your liquid phase fraction. Now for, for phase fraction of solid, Again, we have this total amount, which is the same. And then we have the amount of solid that we need to calculate. So the total amount is obviously 14. Now for phase fraction of solid, you make the horizontal line so that it crosses the liquid line. And the length of the, the line for the liquid line is this length and this 40 minus 30. So it's 10 to 40. This is the phase fraction of solid. It means that out of 14 parts, 10 parts are solid and four parts are liquid. And of course, when you add up the phase fractions, they go to one, one fraction, which is the total. So that tells you that, what it tells you, very useful information, it tells you that at 1250 for an alloy that has 40% nickel, for this kind of an alloy that has 40% nickel, if you keep it at 1250 in your melting pot, you will have 10 to 14 parts solid and 4 to 14 parts liquid. So it will be mostly solid. That's the kind of information that it that is telling you. And what else? It tells you, but if you keep the temperature constant at 1250, but you increase the amount of nickel, from 40% to 90%, you get all solids. So all the liquid, if you keep adding nickel to that um, pot that has solid and liquid, it will all turn into solid. That's what it tells you. So I repeat again, when you are here, that's what we've calculated so far. It says for an alloy that has 40% nickel, at 1250 degrees, you will have a mix of solid and liquid because you're in the airfoil region, in the two-phase region. When you have this mix, out of that mix, 10 parts out of 14 part of it, so the majority of it will be solid and the minority of it will be liquid, only four, four to 14 parts, okay. But what it also tells us that, okay, but now if you keep the temperature constant, 1250, and you go right, what does it mean going right? It means that adding more nickel. So we, we kept the uh, alloy at the same temperature and now we are keeping, we are now adding nickel to the solution and we are mixing. As you are adding nickel 
as you increasing nickel at the same temperature, you enter the solidus line. So anything about 50%, if you just add it to the melt, your melt solidifies. It becomes solid. You don't, you haven't changed the temperature. You just kept adding nickel and it became solid. And you didn't even change the temperature. The same, it tells you that if you go this way from this alloy, so you are uh, taking nickel out or you are adding more copper in. Okay, because you're going this way. Either you're taking out nickel or you're adding more copper in. So the fraction is now changing. So if you're going to this way, it, it tells you that, again, at 1250, when you have this mix, if you add more copper or take nickel out, then the remaining solid at the same temperature, you're not heating it even up. It becomes liquid. The whole thing, because then you will come here. You will come here and here is everything is 100% liquid. So it tells you that, okay, you have a mix of 40% nickel copper alloy. You take nickel out, the solid becomes liquid. You add nickel in, the liquid becomes solid and the temperature is the same. Look how, um, how flexible it is. You can change the state of the matter, the phase of the matter to liquid solid but not even at change temperature. You're adding different amount of material and then you make it solid or liquid at the same temperature. How amazing is that? It's like adding, uh, adding something to liquid water at 20 degrees and then it becomes icy. And not by cooling it down, by adding something to it. That's how uh, versatile and useful uh, phase diagrams are. So this is how you calculate uh, uh, phase fractions for a complete uh, solubility. Now, um, the, there's another concept of composition. So for composition, what do we mean by composition? Now we've calculated that at these two phase, at these two phase region, I also, if I can, I also get rid of this text. PowerPoint allows me. Yeah, there we go. So I, I make the sheet a bit clean so we have more space. All right, let's go. So at this point again, the alloy that has 40% nickel, at this point again at 1250, so we are talking about 1250, and at 1250, we had uh, four to 14 parts liquid and we had 10 to 14 parts solid. That was our phase fraction. But we want to know, okay, in that solid and liquid, do they have the same composition? Is the amount of nickel in that melting pot in solid and liquid, is, is it the same? Well, we can answer this question. Um, because one might think, yeah, well, why, why shouldn't be the same? They are in the same melting pot. They were once liquid at a higher temperature, and now it, it's just one part solid and one part liquid. So the question is, these liquid and solid in one melting pot, do they have the same amount of nickel or copper in solid and liquid? And that's when we talk about composition, and we want to explore that. Well, the short answer to that is no. The amount of nickel in your solid and liquid is not the same and we can actually calculate how much nickel is in your solid and how much nickel is in your liquid. So in that tiny amount of liquid that we had in the melting pot, we want to know how much nickel is in it. So if you want to know how much nickel is in your liquid or what is the composition of your liquid, that's what we want. From this horizontal line that we made that crosses the liquidus line and we dropped it down, that's the composition of your liquid. So at the horizontal line that hits, that crosses the liquidus line tells you the composition of liquid. The horizontal line that crosses the solidus line tells you about the composition of the solid. That's it. So for the 4 to 14 part, of liquid for that tiny amount of liquid, I we want to know what's the composition of that. That has 30% nickel 
and has obviously then 70% copper, your liquid. What is the composition of your solid? We got where it crosses the colorless line again. So we got 44% of nickel and 56% of copper, obviously. Okay, so as you can see, you got more nickel in your solid versus your liquid. So the composition is not the same. They have different composition, your solid liquid in the same melting pot. Although, like when you, used to, when you were at 1315, at the higher temperature, everything was the same. You had one liquid with one composition. What is the composition? 40% nickel. When you drop down to this two-phase two region, this liquid and solid didn't have the same amount of nickel. They differ. So that's how they can be different. Okay. So this was uh, about uh, um, almost all you need to know about how to calculate phase fraction and composition uh, in a, a complete solubility. I hope it was useful for you. And uh, we continue the next one, uh, the next round of practice with partial solubility in the next video. I'll see you.